Do you like cable? I like cable. And CBS is cable's best. And we're going to take a look and see if they have cable's best mock draft. This is mock to mock where we take a look at someone else's mock draft and I give you my opinions on it. You know, it's always fun looking at other people's perspectives and opinions on the draft. So we're going to do that today. We're looking at Josh Edwards from CBS's his mock draft. But before we do that, what's crack lacking? It's your boy Bro Schmo, just in case you did not know. So go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. My analytics, it says only 20% of y'all are actually subscribed. It hurts my feelings, but it is what it is. The least you can do is leave a comment and a thumbs up really helps the video out a ton so we all got to do our part am i right but uh i will have my own mock draft this week um yeah i think i'm only gonna do a first round one i might include trades i don't know we'll see when we get there but be ready for that it's gonna be banger of a mock draft and this one might be too so let's go ahead and dive in let's take a gander at this Ooh, he, uh, he says quarterbacks are going, so oh, we got one right there. So I'm pretty sure, yeah, it's the consensus. Trevor Lawrence, it makes sense. Trevor Lawrence to the Jags. I mean, I know uh, some people might be like, oh, look at how he played in the playoff game. Yeah, but it, it, he's the best quarterback prospect we've seen in years. So you're going Trevor Lawrence. And then he has Justin Fields going to the Jets. I still think it's a toss-up between Fields and Zach Wilson. And I think he, say, he says that. Um, yeah, he says they're neck and neck in this um, debate. I think regardless, you're, the Jets are going to take quarterback here. How often do you plan to be in position to draft the best quarterback in the draft? And in any other class, Fields and Wilson would be the top quarterbacks of their draft. So you're in this position. You grab a signal call. That's just, that's just smart. So I guess we keep on going. You need Sewell going to the Dolphins. Honestly, if they can't trade out this pick, I totally agree. Just pick up Sewell. He'll immediately be your left tackle. Then you got Austin Jackson there on the right, and your line is phenomenal. I would like to trade down, and then maybe we could just grab receiver with that first pick because I feel like this pick's going to be very hotly contested as everyone assumes the Falcons will probably take the third quarterback that's just left over to them. So this could be... Uh, it could be hotly contested. We'll see. He's got Zach Wilson going to the Falcons, just like I said. So, you know what? So far, I like this mock draft. I agree with a lot of it. Then he has Rashawn Slater going at pick five. I disagree. I like Rashawn Slater a lot as a prospect, but uh, as a top five talent, I disagree. I know a lot of people are like, oh, he could play anywhere along the line. The thing is, he's only played tackle at the collegiate level. They sit, they pro, they're projecting that he can play anywhere on the line because, you know, height and short arms, you know. So it's a projection. You're not taking a projection, let alone on the interior in the top five. I, I would keep him at left or right tackle if I'm being honest. I think, hey, let him play, dude. He's graded out well for three consecutive seasons. But, yeah, um, I don't think if you're the Bengals, you reach for this. You just take Jamar Chase, which the Eagles decided not to. I mean, I, I kind of get it. You know, corner is probably it, it's a much bigger need, and still there's good value there. But Jamar Chase, I he's just my he's just higher on my board here. Um, I I would even be more tempted with Kyle Pitts at this point. Um, ah, maybe that's not true. That's not true. Uh, I think I would probably toss and turn between like Caleb Farley and Kyle Pitts with this pick. But, yeah, the corner position does need addressing there in Philly. And then Jamar Chase going to the Lions. They didn't have to do nothing. It just fell this way. That's awesome. They have their top three receivers are all free agents at the end of this year. So, yeah, you go ahead and do that. And then Trey Lance going to the Panthers. If he falls this far, then, yeah, Panthers jump on that. Um, yeah, I don't disagree, man. Bridgewater is just that a bridge quarterback. Okay, M Micah Parsons making it to nine. This is just, I think this is great value. But if if I'm the Broncos, I think in this situation, in this scenario, I'm hoping to get a veteran quarterback in there, whether it's like Dak Prescott, Carson Wentz, even a Phillip Rivers, someone that's not Drew Locke to help lead this team because that, that, that offense is potent. They're dangerous. They're scary. 
So they need someone that can efficiently throw the ball. So yeah, I like Mark, Micah Parsons here. It's it's great value. And then Kyle Pitts to the Cowboys. Interesting. I mean, I assume, yeah, it looks like they say Dak's likely to return. So this is under the assumption Dak returns. Yeah, why not just give him more weapons? Um, I mean, Kyle Pitts, he's probably my top guy currently on the board here then. Um, Caleb Farley might be up there as well, uh, which wouldn't be a bad pick here either. So, yeah, I, I, you know what? For the most, most part, I'm pretty cool with this draft outside of the uh, Rashawn Slater pick. And then Devontae Smith. To the Giants, it makes sense. They need playmakers. Like, Danny Dimes needs playmakers. You might not be in love with Danny Dimes, but that's what you got right now, you know? Unless you're really high on uh, on Mark or uh, Mac Jones here, you get some playmakers for that offense. And then this surprises me. With Mac Jones still on the board, they decide to go offensive interior. Not even cornerback, because what, is Caleb Farley still around? Dude, Caleb Farley's still on the board. That, for me, this Niners pick makes no sense. You basically have no corners next year. They have so many free agents at corners, so your secondary depleted. Quarterback, they could cut Jimmy G, and it would only cost them like $2 million in like dead cap. Why not Mac Jones here? So, yeah, I love Vera Tucker, and I think he'd be a very good fit. Or Shanahan's uh, zone blocking scheme, but no, the other two positions are way more valuable. And then Christian Darisaw, dude, going here to the Chargers, dude. That's a steal. I like that. Oh, it's not necessarily a steal, but um, I don't know, man. Darisaw, he's got that size and athletic, uh, enough athleticism to warrant maybe someone to try to take him in the uh, top top ten, but. Again, I think quarterback's going to be very high in this draft class. I think we can see maybe five go in the first 12 picks. So, But, yeah, you know what? It makes sense. They need someone on the left side there. Uh, Caleb Farley still not coming off the board is a bit of a head scratcher for me. I think even with this pick, I'd be tempted to take Caleb Farley. Keep in mind, Caleb Farley, he primarily – I know he has, like, ideal, uh, like, press man traits, but – the guy primarily played zone there at Virginia Tech. And then Gregory Russo ahead of Quiddy Pay. I got Quiddy Pay higher. He he sh he basically did what what Russo needed to do if he wanted to really elevate his stock. Uh I don't disagree that with the position though. This is they they need help on the D line. And then Jalen Waddle to the Patriots. Still no Mac Jones kind of a head scratcher I, I i don't know i mean i don't know what to say I, I love waddle i think this guy that he can definitely go in the top 10 but quarterback's just way more valuable to the team unless you're bringing cam cam newton back or bringing another veteran quarterback uh, i mean if, if that the plan if that's the plan bringing in another veteran quarterback then grabbing more playmakers it makes sense it makes sense Cardinals, they go Caleb Farley. He ain't making it. I, I'm sorry, Cardinals fans. He ain't going to make it to pick 16. Unless his combine's utter trash. Uh, don't disagree with the uh, position, though. They could go corner here. Um, I think it's a bit weird, though, with the cornerback position. Because you got Farley. You got um, Sertan as your kind of top two guys. JC Horn is kind of hovering there as like a mid to late first rounder and then maybe Tyson Campbell maybe Eric Stokes uh, maybe Darion Kendrick he really hurt his draft stock with the playoff game um though I didn't don't think he it was entirely his fault still though and Asante Samuel Jr those are all borderline for first round great like players so uh, I don't know Cardinals would be an interesting position I'd be like I'd be intrigued with Larry Fitzgerald uh retiring do they go receiver maybe I don't know and then Pay going here to this to the Raiders. This is a steal. Um, I think he's going to be the first edge off the board. I think he has a chance to be a top 10 guy. It's just that's that's his physical and athletic upside, man. He's He's got those crazy traits, and he showed production this season. He showed a bevy of different um, pass rush moves, hand counters and such. He really, really did improve. And then the Miami Dolphins go Jeremiah Owusu-Kuwamura. 
I don't disagree. Go with the best player on your board. I know it's like, oh, we need a receiver, but go with the best player off your board. Um, the other, the only receiver here, maybe what you'd be considering, maybe Rashad Bateman, um, Chris Alave, even uh, Kadarius Tony. Uh, yeah, probably those are the only guys that might pop, like jump here. Even Ter okay, Ter Terrace Marshall. Uh, no, nah, I got, I got, I got, I got the Joker here. I got Joker way earlier than those guys. So, well, uh, Rashad Bateman, not, not much, but I don't know. I feel, I feel like the Dolphins need to look for speed. If with this 18th pick, with this eight, yeah, with the 18th pick, if they're picking, if they got a chance to Jamar Chase, you know, earlier, then I'm fine with that. I don't think he's slow by any means or five, two speed. That's fine. So we got JC Horn actually going to Washington. I don't mind if that's the top player off their board, but with like Rashad Bateman around, um, even Samuel Cosme, I think they could go elsewhere. Their defense has been actually the strong point of their <laughs> of the team. So yeah, I think the offense definitely needs address. But hold on, no Mac Jones still. Where's Mac Jones? <laughs> uh, here we go, Chicago Bears. No Mac Jones. Wyatt Davis here instead. Um, if you're the Bears, if you could get out of Mitch Trubisky, get out of Mitch Trubisky. I don't know if, I mean, yeah, it's likely that he'll probably come back, but he's not the quarterback of the future. Don't fool yourself into thinking he's the quarterback of the future. Um, with Samuel Cosby on the board, I mean, I guess Samuel, I think Samuel Cosby would be solid in their, their blocking scheme. Uh, I might even go receiver here, actually. If you're not going Cosby, maybe go Rashad Bateman or go... Uh, Chris Alave, Terrace Marshall, maybe Mac Jones. Pff, I don't know, man. Uh, the Jaguars, they snag Chris Alave. Hey, I don't mind bringing in more receivers, dude. More the merrier. They got LaVisca Chanel Jr. They got DJ Chark. Um, they could they could slide either of those players into the slot freely, or they could play on the outside. Uh, Alave, he, he's a bit different than those guys as he's a really good underneath polished route runner. Um, he just gets loads of separation. I don't mind giving, giving your uh, quarterback as many weapons as possible. So, yeah, I know they got other needs, but again, the draft isn't, you're not necessarily, you don't want to draft for need. You want to draft for value. So if Alave is like the top receiver on the, or top player prospect on their board at that time, I'm cool with it. And then Joseph Asai going to the Colts. Um, I, for me, Aziz, Aziz uh, Ajulari. Ho hopefully, I nailed it. We'll see. Y'all know how I am with pronunciation. I'm not great. Uh, he's higher on my board. He's like borderline my second edge rusher. The guy just has an it factor about him. It's just, um, I he needs to kind of grow into his body a bit. He's only two two forty six three two forty. So. But he's a redshirt sophomore as well, so young kid, very young kid. Aside, a bit different, man. It's not like he he's got good bend, um, but he's not like he he's 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 good athletically, but not compared to like like guys like Aziz, um, Jalen Phillips, uh, who's got big concerns with the concussions. Uh, Jason away. It's just, I think there's guys with better, um, I guess you would just say uh, better features, better, uh, upside than a side, but I do like a side as he can be a stand up or a hand in the dirt type of pass rusher. So it gives you a bit of versatility there. And then Ojolari going here to the Browns. I think it's a great fit. Um, this is just me assuming Stefan um, or uh, Kevin Stefanski. This is me assuming that he wants to do things similar to how he did it um, or how it was done in Kansas City or Kansas City in Minnesota. Uh, so he'd be looking for, he's got his Everson Griffin and Miles Garrett. So now he's looking for his stupid athletic pass rusher. That would be his Danielle Hunter, which Aziz, he kind of fills that. He, yeah, he fills that role. Uh, on to the tight ends, Jason Owe. They need pass rush. The pa they have one of the worst, <laughs> worst pass rushes in all of football. If the Raiders weren't a thing, but yeah, I agree. Grab him. He he's what? He's 
250. I think he's up to 257, but 6'5, 257. Ridiculous explosion and speed. Um, I do think he can perhaps maybe slip to the second round just because of the lack of production uh, in the sack department, but eh, we'll see. We'll see. Then Jalen Phillips going to the Bucks. Uh, hey, I think the Bucks are going to be looking for immediate starters because people think Tom Brady is going to play till he's 45. Who says he's going to play with the Bucks then after his contract's up, though? I don't know. I'm not going to bet on that. Let's play with this like we have a two-year, well, now one-year Super Bowl window. Let's get guys that could be immediate starters. Phillips, he's got the size to eventually replace like a guy like JPP. Um, and he could even play on the defensive line if he if they really want to get him on the field. Um, I would even I would even assume maybe a Carlos Basham in this role. But again, with Phillips, my biggest concerns. Keep in mind he retired early uh, there at UCLA, and then because of concussions, decided to come back. So he transferred. So again, something that needs to be checked out. And then Chris Humphrey going to. The Ravens, ah, uh, Humphrey, I, y'all, y'all, if y'all not new to the channel, y'all know I'm not that high on, or at least I'm not as high as a lot of other people are on Humphrey because I don't think he's playing center in the NFL. I think he's going to end up moving to guard and he's never played at guard before. So I kind of have like this late second to early third round grade on him. Uh, so I think, yes, this, and look, even this guy is prospect rank 61st. Like, I feel like you're kind of reaching at this point. Um, but, I mean, I guess with a guy like Wyatt Davis off the board. But then, I mean, you still got, like, Rashad Bateman. I think Terrace Marshall's still here. Like, you could get these receivers that give um, Lamar Jackson a big body target. Now they're kind of moving Hollywood more into the slot. So, or at least based on this past week. <sighs> we'll see. We'll see. And then Kadarius Toney going to the jets hey yeah bring in some receivers i i might prefer rashad bateman actually um over Kadarius tony because i feel like tony is he a slot i mean he, he is a guy that kind of you could kind of move around but mm, i don't know i still think i maybe right even terrace marshall i got i would think ahead of him terrace marshall i think is a guy that could fly up boards uh but get a receiver hey yeah get a, get receivers for your franchise quarterback makes sense and then Still no Mac Jones, and we're here at the Steelers pick. Get Jalen Mayfield. Jalen Mayfield's a fourth rounder. Maybe a third, let's be honest. Um, I'm not high on the guy. I don't think he's produced well enough to prove he's a first rounder. He's played the right side. Um, in 2019, it was his first year as a starter. He played right tackle. This year, he started the season right tackle. And only played, like, what, four, four or five games. And it, it was solid, but, I mean, people just will quote... Oh, he played Chase Young particularly well. Well, how do he play the rest of the Ohio State team? Oh, seven to nine sack or what? They, literally, he allowed I think like seven or nine pressures to the rest of the Ohio State team. He was very inconsistent throughout all of 2019. I know people look at size, athleticism, and they're like, "Oh, great man, this guy's gonna be flipping fantastic." I mean, okay, you can bet. Oh, I'd rather bet on that on day two than in the first round when you got Mac Jones, dude, big bad man. Oh, Big Ben's juicing down, dude. Big Ben, he's he's right there. He's outside the door. Oh. Shoot, man. Wasn't he in the same draft as like Eli Manning, who's gone? Phillip Rivers, who's hated by a thread, like. It's gonna be gone soon, man. Uh Darion Kendrick, who kind of talked about earlier, had the rough matchup against Ohio State. Uh going here. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind corner. Uh, I I haven't noticed Xavier Collins go off the board yet. I think linebacker might be a better area to go. Yeah, no Xavier Collins. What the heck, dude? What is this mock draft? Um, yeah, no Xavier Collins though. Like, I think this is a great, great place to take Xavier Collins. Like, are you gonna bet on bet on Zach Bond? Um. Who they got last year? No, dude, grab Evans. Like the dude has a phenomenal skill set for a two hundred and sixty pounder. <sighs> Even Nick Bolton, like, I mean, I don't mind taking a corner here, but I think linebacker might be the better value. Uh yeah, uh, yeah, it, it's okay. 
Zayvon Collins finally going off the board. What the heck, dude? Uh, great pick. Great pick for the uh, Buffalo Bills. They they kind of have one of the most de- like the most depth in all the league as in terms of their roster. Um, they can really go wherever they want. They could go guard if they really want to. They could go uh, corner. They could go edge. So, yeah, do whatever you want. Bills, just make it a – take the best guy off your board. That's all I'm saying. Nick Bolton, though, here we go, back-to-back. Back. I I don't get why the Saints won't make this pick. Like, why wouldn't they pick a linebacker? Um, I mean, I guess I kind of understand, though, if Darian <sighs> – I don't know. To me, Zayvon Collins, he's kind of got a skill set that can have him sneak into the top 20, top 15. Like, I think a lot of NFL teams are going to like that. I don't know. But yeah, Packers, they need linebacking help. I mean, typically they only run one linebacker on the field. They like to almost be exclusively in nickel, and they'll have like three safeties on the field. So, uh, yeah, Upgrade a linebacker would be nice, and you get great value because Nick Bolton's phenomenal. And then the final pick, Kansas Chiefs. Chiefs go Josh Myers, who I have a fourth, I think a fourth or a third round grade on. Um, let me check. Let me check. Let me check. Regardless, I think it's a reach. I mean, why not go with a more valuable, like valuable position anyway? Receiver, edge. They kind of need edge help in the worst way. Uh, I mean, you get they got guys like who, um, Brenton Cox still on the board. Uh, I think Carlos Basham's still on the board in this draft. Like, yeah, they could definitely go edge. Uh, here we go, offensive interior. Where do I have Josh Myers ranked? Oh my gosh, I can't. There we go. I couldn't find my offensive interior. Yeah, I got a fourth round grade on him. Yeah. Yeah, that pick sucked. <laughs> um, Overall, it was an interesting draft, I guess. So, is Samuel Cosby still on the board, too? Yo, why do these, why do these analysts hate Samuel Cosby so much? Like, dude, whose mama did he badmouth? Um, yeah. I mean, I guess looking at this guy's draft, okay, I agree with the first four picks. I think you're going to be hard-pressed to find, you know, no kind of agreement with these picks. Um, Like, even if you put Jamar Chase here, I think I would have been okay with it. Uh, But Slater is just too early for me. Uh, Jamar Chase still on the board. I think I would have taken Chase over a corner. I don't know. It's kind of a toss-up, so I'll get benefit of the doubt. But no Mac Jones throughout this whole thing. Like, okay, this is my thing about Mac Jones. I've had to come to the realization because I was so hesitant to move him up my board for so long. But, I mean, dude, he put he's put up Burrow numbers. He actually has similar arm talent to Joe Burrow. He's not, he's not as mobile as Bur- Burrow is. But, I mean, you really – you. Re- you don't have to be a mobile quarterback to succeed in the NFL. It is what if you can maneuver the pocket fine, then it's great. It's good. Uh so like honestly, I I have a top fifteen grade at this point on Jones. I I'm kinda pretty I'm at this point, I'm him and Trey Lance are kinda like neck to neck. Kinda like how it is with Fields and Wilson. So that just kinda puzzles my mind, dude. Like Mac Mac Jones, he's going to win the Heisman this season. He is. Just saying. We talked about this in my stream. They gave the Heisman to Joe Burrow over Jamar Chase. Best believe they should give it over, give it to Mac Jones over Devontae Smith. They'd be hypocrites if they did. They didn't do that. Uh, so, yeah, Mac Jones not going even like to any quarterback needy team. Really kind of surprises me. I like Elijah Vera Tucker, but th- I think this is way earlier when you like if you have Ma- like if Mac Jones is on the board here or Caleb Farley, I'm taking those guys ahead of Vera Tucker. It just is what it is. Quiddy Pay, I just I, I assume most people are in agreement that he's gonna be a top ten pick. Um or at least the top edge off the board. Uh Mac Jones not going here to the Patriots. I'm I mean I love Jalen Waddle, but quarterback's a way more valuable position. 
yeah so like farley and pay fallen like i i get good prospects they fall in drafts that's just how it happens players fall in the draft but uh caleb farley and pay are at this point uh to see both of them fall i think is mm, i don't know about that and it's still again no mac jones here like even christian or uh samuel cosme i'd be willing to take like I think they're fine and they're fine enough if they want to address corner they could go to corner later in the draft no mac jones to the bears uh, did, did rashad bateman even or even i don't think rashad bateman came off the board here oh my gosh he has bateman in the second round interesting all right well i could ramble on for this for a hot minute but uh that's it for the video that's it for the video go ahead do that youtube thing it's always much appreciated much obliged i will be streaming thursday on the twitch at broschmo gaming so check me out there we're gonna be playing um i assume we'll play some ncaa i kind of got a taste for it again so yeah as always till next time you be easy my friends later